evening, everyone, and Happy New Year. I'm going to call the January 8th, 2018 Shelby Township Planning Commission meeting to order. Uh, Secretary Moore, will you please call the roll? Mr. Dallo. Here. Mr. Seco. Here. Ms. Casali. Here. Mr. Apone. Here. Mr. Wozniak. Here. Mr. Moffitt is absent. Chairman Turner. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. First item is our approval of our agenda. We have some modifications on the agenda under new business. We'll be removing election of officers and putting that on our next scheduled meeting, which will be in February. And we're going to be adding a presentation by Mr. Wynn on a site plan modification under new business. With that, a motion would be in order. So moved. Support. Support. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Approval of the minutes from our December 11th, 2017 meeting. So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Tonight we have three items, one public hearing and two site plans. <clears throat> the first is a uh, <coughs> clear zoning adoption public hearing, a new modification and uh, modernization of our zoning ordinance. And uh, Secretary Moore, will you please read the notice as published for that? Public notice, Charter Township of Shelby, notice the public hearing to consider adoption of a new zoning ordinance. The Charter Township of Shelby Planning Commission will conduct a public hearing on January 8, 2018, beginning at 7 p.m. The hearing will be conducted at the Shelby Township Municipal Building, 52700 Van Dyke, Shelby Township, Michigan, 48316. The purpose of this hearing is to receive comments from the public on a new zoning ordinance that will replace the existing zoning ordinance in its entirety. The proposed zoning ordinance contains more graphic representations of zoning regulations and new formatting, which will make the zoning ordinance more <coughs> user-friendly and it includes clarifying and amending certain provisions. A draft copy of the zoning ordinance is available for review at the Planning and Zoning Department during regular business hours, 8.30 a.m. through 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, written comments may be submitted prior to the hearing at the Shelby Township Municipal Building or mailed to Planning and Zoning Department, 52700 Van Dyke, Shelby Township, Michigan. Oral comments will be taken during the public hearing. This notice is per published pursuant to the requirements of Michigan Public Act 110 of 2006 as amended. Shelby Township Planning Commission, Jerome Moffitt, Chair, Raquel Moore, Secretary, this was published in the Shelby Utica News on December 20th, 2017. All right, thank you. Did we receive any correspondence on this? No, we did not, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. The format for the public hearing will be as follows. Our township consultant that was hired for this will make a presentation on the new clear zoning plan. Commissioners may then ask any questions that they would like. We'll then open the floor for public comment, and then we uh, can make any concluding remarks afterwards. Mr. Wynn, I'll kick it over to you to get us started tonight. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Board uh, Commission members. Um, the township hired Giffels Webster, um, which is a consulting firm, last um, last summer to um, prepare this update to the zoning ordinance, it's known as Clear Zoning, and it's a product that really is transformative in terms of how the ordinance works and how it looks, um, and it's it's a really user-friendly <coughs> product. Those of you who have had copies of the ordinance know it's uh, several inches thick, and it's unless you're really familiar with it, it's really difficult for the average person to get through it. Um, this product has been on the market for a number of years. I think Rod's firm has pioneered it and introduced it. And, um, something that really we're interested in, in, in doing for a number of years, we didn't have enough money in the budget. I'm very grateful to Commissioner Wozniak and the board members for authorizing this expense. I think it's well worth it. We'll be the first community in Macomb County to actually have this product. So I'd like to introduce Rod Arroyo. He's got a, a PowerPoint demonstration. If you can't see the screen, a uh, copy of the PowerPoint slides are available. And then when Rod's done, after some question and answer, I've got a few concluding remarks, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. To see what you have to say, so. We're excited to share with you. Um, uh, my name is Rod Arroyo. I'm a partner with Giffels Webster. And as Glenn mentioned, uh, we've been working with the township and basically transforming your existing ordinance into the clear zoning format. Um, our tagline is, it's your zoning ordinance only better. The whole idea behind it is to maintain the regulatory effect, everything you've worked hard on, but to have it presented in a way where it's easier to understand, easier to use, easier to navigate. We came up with this concept, actually it's about 10 years ago. 2007 was, uh, we were uh, 
responding to an RFP for a new zoning ordinance in a community on the west side of the state. And uh, I was working on the proposal, and I said, you know, we've been noodling around with some different ideas for improving zoning. We need to put this forward in a proposal. So we put a proposal together, came up with a rough concept for this, presented it, didn't get the job. And uh, we came back, and we, it turns out we found out we would have never gotten the job that was going to go to this other firm anyway. That's the way things go sometimes. And uh, came back to the office and said, you know, we're going to make lemonade out of these lemons. We're going to take this concept, and we're going to make it even better. So we got our office staff together, and we spent probably the best part of about six months on and off um, getting together, working to develop a product that would really transform zoning ordinances. And that's how clear zoning came about. And we uh, had the first community adopt uh, a clear zoning code back in 2008. We're now in about 20 different municipalities. <coughs> we're in uh, five states. Um, our, the latest one we're working on out of state is actually in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Um, but most of the communities are in Michigan. Most are in southeast Michigan. And we're excited that you're going to be the first one in Macomb County. So it's, it's very exciting to us, and particularly me. I'm a Macomb County resident. So um, I'm going to take you through a brief slideshow that's going to show you what some of the highlights are. Uh, as I mentioned, more, more user friendliness, making it easier to get quick answers to questions. Uh, that's, that's one of the keys that you'll see as we go through some more graphics, colorful graphics, uh, instead of the traditional black and white graphics that we often see in zoning ordinances. Digitally hyperlinked, so that if you're using a digital version, whether it's on a tablet or a com computer, you can quickly hyperlink back and forth to get information instead of having to thumb through pages. And then an updated common sense format that we think just makes a lot more sense that I'll show you. Um, all the definitions are consolidated into one section. Um, and then they're listed on actually a, like a two-page spread in your case because of the number of definitions you have. All the site standards are now in one section. So if things such as landscaping, uh, parking lot layout, all of that, all in one section that is then hyperlinked to the, to the various districts. The land use standards are all in one section. So if it's a use standard associated with a specific land use, that's in one area. A use matrix has been added, which we think is one of the most helpful tools that I'll, I'll show you in just a minute. And then the zoning map legend is also hyperlinked to the zoning districts. So as you go through that, um, you can actually um, get quick answers when you've got the zoning map in front of you as well. Uh, the good news is the end result is doesn't require any expensive software to use. It, the, the final product, you use Adobe Acrobat Reader, which almost everybody has on their computer. If they don't, they can download it for free. So the idea is to make this free to the end user. So once this is up on the township's website and is adopted, you would just go to the township's website, go to, you could search for zoning ordinance. Um, you've got a specific page where your zoning ordinance and map is located and it will be found there. And then once you open it up, uh, one of the things that we're gonna do once this is adopted, we're gonna create a short video that kind of walks you through the process. So that if you're a first time user, that can be on the township's website. And there's some things you can actually do to your Adobe Acrobat Reader to add some tools that makes it easier to navigate through this ordinance. So we're going to show you in that video how that works. Uh, it's adding specific buttons like back buttons, last page, next page, so you can go back and forth a little easier. And also um, a few other uh, things such as looking at a two-page spread versus a single spread. So the video will explain all that. I'm not going to go into that in a whole lot of detail tonight. But what I want to show you is one of the things that, that it does that is um, the boardroom was disconnected, it says. That happened. There we go. Okay. Back to where I went. Okay, so um, looks like it's showing up here, but not here. Okay. That's the page that I'm, I've got up right now. So uh, in terms of searchability, if you enter in a word, for example, I entered in fences here, it'll show you everywhere within the ordinance that the term fence um, appears. And yeah, it looks like it's rebooting. There we go. All right, and so, and then it'll, it'll show you everywhere. So you can go through and, and find those terms. So if you're looking into quick answers to questions, you can get that. Um, also, we tell you what different symbols are. We have different symbols. If you see a little book symbol next to a word, that means you know it's a defined term. So you can go into the definition section of the ordinance and actually find that. 
Uh, the table of contents, we break down the uh, ordinance into seven basic articles. That's the simplification of many articles into seven. And it's purpose and introduction, definitions, zoning districts, use standards, site standards, development procedures, administration, appeals, and enforcement. Really straightforward, easy to understand. There's a two-page spread on how to use this ordinance. We'll describe how um, the ordinance works when you're looking at it from a two-page spread. It explains what each um, provision is. Here's a close-up of the two-page uh, spread of the your R1C district, for example. You'll see at the bottom there are three buttons on every page. Um, there's a map button, which will always take you right to the zoning map if you ever need to get to the zoning map. Um, there's, a, there's a home button uh, that gets you back to the uh, table of contents. And then the I button is the information button, which takes you to that how to use this ordinance page, in case you ever are wondering what the symbols are. So it makes it easy to find that. And you can see on this two-page spread, you have a lot of information that you would need to know about um, a, a zoning district. For example, on the left-hand side, we see the intent, and then the uh, principal permitted uses are on the left side, and the special land uses are on the right side. And wherever you see blue text, that means it's hyperlinked. So if you click on that, that'll actually take you to the standards for that particular land use. On the right side, we see the, the, the various uh, development standards, setbacks, height, and what have you. But also, there's a link to important selected references, things such as your landscaping requirements, um, sanitary sewer system requirements, frontage requirements. And those are all hyperlinked as well. So you just click on those, and it instantly brings those standards up. Um, if we look here at the, at the right side in a more detailed um, look at the various setback requirements and the like, you can also see that it shows you building height, but not every roof type is exactly like this. So you can click on how do I calculate building height, takes you back to the definition section and shows you the various um, definitions of building height depending upon the type of roof type that you have. So there's that interaction back and forth that makes it, once again, easy to find those answers. I mentioned the use matrix up front. The use matrix asks, answers a lot of the basic questions. For example, when somebody comes to the counter, they may say, I want to put in a child care facility. Where can a child care facility go in the township? Well, this makes it real easy because you just look up child care centers and you go across and it'll show you whether it's a special land use or a principal use in all the different districts. And then you can instantly see what that is. And then if you click on the color tab at the top for that district, it'll take you right to that district provision and you'll get all the information you need for the district. Uh, I mentioned the zoning map. The zoning map is here. The legend is hyperlinked. So if you're interested in a property that's zoned R1C, you just click on R1C and the R1C district provisions pop up and you can get the information you need about that particular district and, and learn what you need and see how that applies to your property. Uh, definitions, I mentioned that. They're all listed out here. Uh, in, in Because you can see the text is in blue, that means it's hyperlinked. So if you click on that definition, it'll take you right to the specific definition itself. And we've added a number of graphics within the definition pages to make it easier to understand those definitions. And they're all in color. And then we've also updated all the other graphics in color as well. These are your parking uh, graphics that show um, parking lot uh, design requirements, everything here, easy to read, easy to understand, and you really always have an original because it's digital. The nice thing about it is it doesn't degrade. We used to have pep, uh, paper copies of zoning ordinances. You photocopy them and you get old graphics and you have to cut and paste them in. And Glenn remembers this. You go back, they just didn't look that great over time. And people would lose the original and then the copies would disintegrate. You always have good quality graphics. Uh, you always effectively have an original in front of you because it's a digital representation. So um, that concludes the presentation, shows you the functionality. And as I mentioned, we will have a, a video once it's adopted that will walk you through all of that. So it will make it easy for a first time user. I'll be happy to try to answer any questions. All right. Mr. Wynn, did you want to anything yeah, else right now? A couple, a couple of concluding remarks, Mr. Chairman. So procedurally, we're really not, with a couple of exceptions, we're not changing the ordinance. It's largely the same ordinance with three exceptions. Um, it, when we had prepared a series of amendments that we wanted to introduce you to, Rod suggested we don't do that as part of the clear zoning process because then you're, you're, it's confusing what you're amending and what you're updating. So there are two changes, though, and these are 
big changes in terms of um, the districts, but they're almost meaningless. We had two districts we never used. One's called Industrial Research IR, was never mapped. So it's just then there's a placeholder for, you know, sort of high tech developments, which we're getting anyways, but they're just called light manufacturing or heavy manufacturing. The other was called T1, a transitional district. And it was there as a, a placeholder for deeper setbacks between the right of way and parking. Well, those those setbacks are already built into the district, so again, it was meaningless. There was one other area in the <coughs> table of requirements for single family where we had two different standards for lot coverage. One was 25 and one was 30. It said the same thing in the same paragraph, so we went, I think, to the 25. There's made no sense not to do this now, but otherwise, everything in the ordinance is the same. It just looks different, and to verify that, I actually printed out the whole clear zoning book, which was about 300 pages, and went through it page by page just to make sure that there was nothing added that was different. And we found a few things we had to tweak just to make sure, but um, this is really the same ordinance, just in a different format. But we felt, the, and Rod's experience and our attorneys could agree that we should just notice this and treat it as an adoption of a new ordinance or a, an amendment so we have a track record when we did this. So this will have to go to the board for the normal processing. Okay. Any commissioners have any questions on the ordinance modification? For Mr. Wynn, uh, who's, who's going to administrate the changes in this? Well, we will. So what happens, you know, typically when we introduce changes, we will, um, we do that at the staff level, Mr. Wozniak, you know, and, and present them. Well, no, usually, usually I do, the, I do the zoning mostly, you know, and we're, we have a series of amendments we want to give to you almost immediately. Um, and then after that's done, after the board approves them, then they go, they typically went to municipal code and they codified them for us. We will retain Giffels Webster to do that and put them in the clear zoning format. And it's, it's really fairly, I think when you introduce this, it's a very reasonable price to do that. We're going to pay for it either way, but we would like to retain them to do those, put those amendments in. But the actual preparing of the amendments, I will do. Okay. And what about the over, overall map? Well, we did the map. Scott did the map. Scott, but that'll be changing, right? Uh, but, yeah, but there, we didn't change any zoning on the map. But okay. we will maintain the map ourselves. And Scott's okay. been doing that. Good. So this is the first time we could introduce this because we had the capability in-house to do this. So Scott was able to do that rather than and farming that out, which was a real benefit to us. But otherwise, there's no additional cost associated with this. And it actually may be less than municipal code cost to codify it. Anyone else have any questions? Mr. Turner. Go ahead, Mr. Dowell. Two, two, also, uh, examples of the T1 and the research, we adding these to the ordinance, what are we bringing? Who fall under these well, two the, categories? The, the T1 district was a district that really only required, it was a, a district that provided deeper setbacks for certain commercial. Um, and that was introduced at a time where there was a point that when you, in your ordinance back before 1977, in a C1 district, you had no requirement for a setback for landscaping between the property line and the parking lot. When the 1997 ordinance was adopted, we introduced that standard. So it effectively made T1 meaningless because it, the, the districts included that standard. The, the industrial research, there was a time where every community jumped on the bandwagon and think they're going to attract high tech by having a district in their ordinance. Well, we're getting high tech, but we're getting it in our heavy manufacturing district of all things. So it was, it was meaningless. The uses that are allowed there are allowed somewhere else, and we never even applied it to the map. So I don't even know where we want to put it. But it's been in your ordinance historically for many years, probably three decades, and hasn't attracted anybody. So it's just it's kind of meaningless. One more clarification, Mr. Go ahead. One. Mm -hmm. You indicated there's no changes in residential, uh, commercial, and manufacturing for setbacks and requirements, and so this is not just the addition that we adding to the our zoning. It's really just a format change more than anything, <clears throat> yes. but a real important format change. And it looks good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, one, one clarification, Mr. Dallo, are you saying we're adding? The IR and the transition because we're we're removing those. Moving those. Yeah, removing. Okay, yeah. I misunderstood yeah. what you said. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Hearing none. Okay, we're going to go to the public <coughs> comment from the floor, and I'll first we'll do. I'll say this is the only public hearing the Planning Commission will hold on this clear zoning plan. 
The Planning Commission is a recommending body. Remarks will be entered into the record for Township Board evaluation. The Township Board will take into consideration these comments when making the final decision on the plan. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this, for or against, come on down. Going once, twice. Okay, hearing none, come back up here. Anything else you'd like to add to the plan, Mr. Wynn? Nothing else, thank you. If not, then a motion would be in order on this uh, adoption. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to recommend approval to the Township Board for the conversion of the Township Zoning Ordinance to the clear zoning format. Support. Uh, Commissioner DeSico, supported by Commissioner Dallo. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, uh, Commissioner DeSico. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Dallo. Yes. Commissioner Wozniak. Yes. Commissioner Appone. Yes. Commissioner Moore. Yes. Commissioner Casale. Yes. My mic went, oh, there it goes. Motion carries. Chair votes yes. The mic's cutting out on me up here. Thank you. We're all set. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ron. Good job. I appreciate that. The next item we have tonight is site plan number 17-52 for Brian Gibson, Schwab Industries. Uh, this is a south of 23 mile between Shaner and Hayes, a building addition. Um, Mr. Aleph, we're going to start it off first. So <clears throat> this is an expansion of an industrial site on south side of 23 mile. Uh, there's two existing facilities right now. I think it's spread over three parcels, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the intent is to uh, build an expansion, merge all the properties and buildings into one, one site. Um, for the most part, the, uh, the designer has addressed almost all the comments. There's a few, still a few uh, lingering issues. Um, the, there was some concern by the building department over whether certain designs were, were going to work. I don't believe those have been 100% addressed yet. Um, there was discussion done, but they didn't express a finality to it. Uh, there's still some issues with the uh, fire department access around the building. They require 26 foot. I think there's some spots that are less than 24 over there. Um, for the new expansion, the building itself is going to be 47 foot 6 inches, which exceeds the uh, height requirements for or the height limits for the area. This is going to require a uh, variance. And in addition to that, there's a significant amount of metal siding on that. Uh, while that's a permitted uh, design option, uh, one of the requirements is to kind of mitigate it and balance it off with the rest of the building. Uh, what I'd like to see done is to have that at least to the top of all the doors for the um, for any of the decorative material on the bottom and then the metal siding above that. Um, most of the engineers' comments uh, can be addressed later on during the engineering process. And uh, the only major <coughs> issue other than that is uh, they're going to require a variance for parking okay thank you mr. Snyder go ahead hi Pete Snyder urban land consultants 8800 23 mile road uh, Shelby Township Michigan representing Schwab Industries obviously in this matter um, a couple things uh, again uh, your planners summary is, is of course accurate a uh, couple things I do want to say about the fire department the, the fire department access issue that was actually resolved with the fire department there's a requirement uh, they allow one way for fire department access except if the building exceeds 30 feet and then it has to be 26 so the portion of building that was too high actually let me slip this. <coughs> like can, there yep. we go now you can hear me okay so we have the required width all the way around here. The issue was right here at the truck well. This is a new portion of the building that's, that stuck out uh, that for the truck well unloading. So what they did was they, and there's only 20 feet from here to the property line. This was the area at issue where it was less than 26. And by, by reducing this section, the, the truck well receiving area, down to below the 30 feet, uh, I think we resolved that with the, with the fire department. So. Uh, I think we're good with the fire access. The, the, um, the, the flow for the traffic in general, we're not adding any new entrances. There's a building here and there's a building here. Truck traffic's going to come in, go around, back into the truck well, unload, and then exit. This is a new parking area for the employees. I want to spend just a 
quick minute on both of the requested variances, not because this is the ZBA, but because you're the planning commission and I'm asking for something out of bounds. So let me just explain it real quick. Um, the, with regard to the height, this addition is being built to house two stamping presses. They are 40 feet tall. They're set down in a well. They're actually the bottom of them's like 15 feet below floor level, but they're still sticking 25 feet up in the air. And not only that, that ends at 25 feet, but there's the dies that go into these presses need to be changed out. That's too high up and they're quite heavy, so they need crane and access working space above that in order to change out the dies from the top. So when you add up the height of the press plus the crane space above it, plus the support structure for the crane above it, plus some roof gables and uh, a little bit of slope, you end up with 47.5. So there's a, you know, it's not like he's trying to build it tall just to make it tall. It's an expensive building, but it has to be because he has a, you know, he has two million and a half dollar presses that are going inside, and they're and they're very tall to start with. So that's that's why this part of the building is is so tall. And uh, again, I, it's under the circumstances, it's building, it's being built exactly for that machinery. It needs to be that tall. Um, with regard to the parking variance. You know, I think you're uh, at this stage getting a little. <laughs> we see a lot of parking variances requested for for manufacturing, and this is yet another uh, instance. The existing buildings he's got um, are about 41,500 square feet combined. Um, he's got about 50 employees. This new structure, it's mostly robotic. It's mostly, you know, it's no, it's mechanized. There's not a lot of of employees he's going to add. And he says he's going to bring in staff from another facility, maybe eight or ten new employees right away. At most, you're going to be up to 70 employees here. Cram-packed, you couldn't get above 90. There's just not that much room. These, these are very big pieces of machinery. So, again, we're providing, I think, what is it, 100 and, uh, 131 or 128, excuse me, 128 spaces. And he really has no need for more than, you know, more than about 70. So that's the that's the rationale behind the parking. We we took this area and put as much parking on it as we could and added a little bit here, especially our handicap. That'll be real convenient for the handicap spaces. So that's the uh, that's the explanation with that. I don't again. This went through departmental reviews. I think we responded to the departmental reviews and covered just about everything. So I, I'm comfortable bringing it to the planning commission and asking for your approval, subject to. You know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's with the planning department, like we usually do. Mr. Snyder, do you have the <clears throat> elevations on your board there? About Mr. Aloff's comment regarding the siding, I would agree there is an excessive amount, particularly on that top portion, is the east elevation. Yeah. The. Okay. Yeah. So, from your vantage point, the. This is the the metal siding mm -hmm. down here. Low is the is the masonry. So we, based on the initial review comments we got on the on the face of the building, I'm just going to point down here. The north face is what you can see from 23 Mile Road. The east face is back to back, um, 50 feet away from other industrial buildings and parking, right next door. So I talked to the applicant, you know, right earlier and said, hey, if, if, if we're going to improve the look of this building, is that okay with you? And he said, yeah, but, but let's concentrate on the areas that might be visible, meaning this north face. I don't know that improving the east face visibility is really going to gain you anything because people aren't looking at it from the back of the industrial from the other side. And when I went out there, I looked at that side, and there's a building immediately to your east that has, looks like all siding. So you know, I, I kind of understand where you're coming from on that point. The, um, when I was out there also, the, is, is this addition going to be used for any storage at all? Yes. What you saw out back yeah. there is either going to be removed or it's going to get inside. Okay, because you yeah. wouldn't be able to get around that building if you had all that storage in the back. Exactly. You know, it's, I, I, I know as commissioners, you, you see the indu these industrial buildings regularly, and your your thought always is, hey, where they? You know, everybody needs a little outside storage, whether they tell the planning commission or not, right? Mm -hmm. This one, he doesn't have any room. I don't think you could have a violation here because you wouldn't be able to drive around it. <laughs> There's really no room left for outside storage. All that stuff that's behind... Uh, 
uh, in your chair is referring to that there's outside storage yeah. really all through here with just a little avenue to drive through. That's all coming inside the building or it's being removed because it's not, uh, it's not useful anymore. It's not okay. product anymore. I'd like to get some feedback from other commissioners how they feel about the siding also if they could. So anybody else have any uh, questions or comments for Mr. Snyder? Everyone's okay with the siding as it is on the plan we have here before us? Yes, yes. Okay. I just had a Go minor, ahead, Mr. Wozniak. Minor question on the handicap parking. Certainly. Uh, you've got six spaces. Mm -hmm. You haven't eliminated any. But is the allocation and the spacing of the, uh, the, those handicaps if in the proper locations? The rules for handicap spaces is they have to be the, the most useful for access to the building. So those handicap spaces are... Are there? There's four there. Here, right immediately in front of the door. Yeah. And then under the situation that you might have somebody needing to come in here, there's two more right over there. Again, the way you've designed that building, that's adequate where they're at. We think so. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, for the the existing door. There's doors here, and there's doors on here. So straight in, straight in. Thank you. That's all I. Have. Okay. Anybody else? All right, hearing none, a motion would be in order. <coughs> Mr. Chair, Mr. I'd like to make a, a motion to approve the site plan application number 17-52 for Brian Gibson, Schwab Industries, subject to the submission of a revised plan addressing all department comments and approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals for all required variances. Support. Motion by Commissioner DeSico, supported by Commissioner Dallo. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, Commissioner DeSico. Yes. Commissioner Dallo? Yes. Commissioner Wozniak? Yes. Commissioner Appone? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Commissioner Caselli? Yes. And the chair votes yes. You're all set. Thank Motion you very carries. much. Thank you. Good luck. <coughs> and our last item on the agenda of the under uh, business is the, uh, let's see what we got here, uh, site plan number 17-55, SLU 14, for uh, Mundhir Zire, Zire Marathon on uh, South West, southeast corner of West Utica and DeQuinder Road. He's, it's a non-conforming use. He's going to be adding a drive through sure. Go ahead, Mr. Wynn. I'll have you start it off. As, as, well, Mr. Lynn's putting up the displays. I kind of want to just kind of give you an overview of this project. I think we talked a little bit about it in an earlier meeting last year. Um, there's an, ex as you know, the existing gas station's been there for many years. And we've been in uh, discussions, uh, very good discussions with the applicant, his engineer, and architect over the last six months to review this plan. They want to expand um, <clears throat> the building. But maybe you can show where that expansion area is behind the building. And then adding um, a drive through lane in the event that they're able to attract a tenant that might, you know, like a Jimmy John's or a coffee shop that would be ancillary. And then. Um, um, some new exterior elevations, which are shown in schematic form at, at the bottom. And you know, I think you can see anybody that's been by there, um, this is a real meaningful, meaningful change, and we're really appreciative of the applicant's interest in doing this. So the site zone C1, and we, I think we talked to you before about procedurally, you know, a gas station is non conforming, adding a drive through is non conforming. This site really isn't C1, in fact, it's, it's just zoned that way. So we looked at the most practical way of doing this because we just didn't want to send somebody away and make them go through the rezoning process, which is timely, time-consuming and expensive just to get to where we want to go. And the, that we think we can do it through the Class A non-conforming use process. So we think that's a better, a better option. Um, the challenge we've had with the site is what we have with all older sites that were built many years before the adoption of current zoning standards is you don't meet all the setbacks for parking or landscaping. Um, so it's, it's been a challenge trying to, you know, bring the site into some reasonable compliance. And I think between the architect and the engineer, they've done a really good job. Um, you know, the parking is what it is. They've added a few more spaces. I think, Bob, on the south side to accommodate, um, yeah, some additional uh, demand for employees or somebody who wanted to just come in and, and buy something that wasn't going to pump their gas. Um, there are, are a couple of variances that would be needed, uh, which was, you know, kind of not uncommon. Um, and we do, would like to see some refinement of the elevations in a final format. But at a staff level, we're very comfortable with this. We think, again, it's been a really nice <coughs> job, and we 
we didn't want to tell somebody to go away when they want to make this kind of investment. We wanted to find a way to say yes. And when you have um, the, the kind of quality design work that they presented, it makes it a lot easier. So with some modifications to the plan and some variances and some enhanced landscaping in those limited green areas, we think this is a workable plan and we're encouraged and enthusiastic about making a recommendation for approval. Okay. Come on down, sir, make your presentation. Uh, good evening. My name is Bob Lynn. I'm with Urban Land Consultants. Uh, uh, Mr. Zarr was in my office about a year and a half ago asking about what he could do to fix this place up. And going back uh, through history, uh, I just happened to have done the mini storage 30 some years ago next door. So when we did some survey in Topo, we discovered that the ret retaining wall that we designed was made out of wood and we had some issues with that so we had to first of all get an attorney to find out who owned the property and it turned out somebody was in California that owned it so we had to get permission to go on to their property and redo the wall like it should have been built the first time so that was the first thing that we found wrong and then as as this thing has evolved we, we needed to you know do this and do that i mean this the, the site is on septic in the back where that uh, drive through is is a, is a septic field and tank he's got a well so it, 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 it we had a lot of challenges i, I guess to put it that way but i think we, we're, we're trying to do something that was going to be enhanced the community this gas station has been around since the 50s and we looked at different alternatives but i think this is the best solution to uh, to update the you know the site make it more conforming with the surrounding buildings so I don't know if you have any questions of me but I'll be happy to answer them for you if I can I just think anything we can do to take a mid 20th century building and bring it into the 21st century would be good for you and for the township so that, that that's a good positive step forward any other commissioners have any questions or comments for the applicant Go ahead. This clarification is the new addition have its own closing and an opening area. It's, it's, it's a separate building, or is going to be inside the gas station? No, it'll be one larger building. It'll be added on. There'll be no, no other. You know, you, you you only can come in from the front. There is an emergency exit out the back for the. Uh, so it's similar the to the one you yeah, see it's, in. It's uh, under one uh, roof. Yeah. Expressway. There's no change of hours or anything else. The, it'll be essentially the same hours of operation. We do have some challenges, and Mr. Zar has agreed to do that. But when we have the dumpster behind the back, we want to make sure that we pick that up at off hours, so not to interfere with customers. Likewise, in the in the in the front, we have the filling tanks. The tanks have been inspected. I think they're good for another five years. But you know, we have those challenges to try to you know, work together to, to not inconvenience the, the customer. Thank you. I'm very happy to see the changes to be done. Thank you. You've read all the comments by our planner and you, you're in agreement I think agreement we can handle that. I, I, you, I guess if we can put more trees on here, but I have a very limited space where I can plant them. I, I got maybe eight feet between the, the property line and the, and the sidewalk. So we, the we, back think, we think that's achievable. It may not just be trees. It may be some other landscaping. But we yeah. just wanted to go back one more time and kind of revisit what we could put where. I mean, we can put some shrubbery around some that's of these fine. things. Uh, you know, <laughs> I think you know, the client is willing to, you know, go the extra mile here to, to make this a win-win for, for him and the community. Right. So we, we're comfortable that those punch list items, Mr. Chairman, Commission members, are, are resolvable. And then tweak the elevations a little bit, and we'll be all set, right? Yeah, I think it's more just that we wanted them in more refined. Right. You know, it's a okay. perfect. Well, perfectly that was the good. first concept. So yeah. Right. So 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 if we're on the right track, then we just could go back and do the. Well, I, just the to final. point out, the architect that's doing this also did the um, A and B party store renovation. You can see how seamlessly that turned out. So I'm, I'm comfortable that we're you know we're on the right track here. All right. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Hearing none, a motion is in order. Mr. Turner. Sally. 
I move to approve the site plan application number 17-55 Mike Zare Marathon Expansion <clears throat> 45440 DeQuinder Road, southeast corner of West Utica and DeQuinder, subject to the submission of a revised plan addressing all department comments and approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals for all required variances. Support. Support. Motion by Ms. Commissioner Casale, supported by Commissioner Moore. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, Commissioner Casale? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Commissioner Wozniak? Yes. Commissioner Apone? Yes. Commissioner Dallo? Yes. Commissioner DeSico? Yes. And Chair votes yes. You're all set, sir. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Have a great night. Okay, Mr. Wynn, Planning Director's report. Um, we oh, will I'm sorry, you under new business first, Mr. Wynn. You wanted to add a... Yes, we have a... Um, our, our, as you know, we have a study meeting next Monday, but we the following Monday, the 22nd, we have, was our regular meeting. Today's a deadline. We only had one agenda item, and we thought perhaps we could explain it to you tonight. It's really small, minor addition that perhaps we could you would allow us to do it administratively. Mr. Aliff will kind of give you some background on the site and what they're changing. All right, this is an existing site. It has uh, two uh, medical buildings that have been vacant for some time now. It's on the east side of Van Dyke, north of 24 Mile. Uh, what they wanted to do on this is some really modest site improvements. They're going to be expanding the parking lot. Um, they're actually going to have a slight loss of spaces, but they should still be above the required number. Um, a little bit of modification to the siding, but only in small sections of the buildings. So, like I said, it's it's a very small modification to the site. Uh, the only concern I would have on this, and this has to be addressed with them, is it looks like they're prepping the eastern side of the site for development. Um, that what you see is only half of the entire parcel. The eastern side being an R12 versus the uh, commercial district on this side. So, I, I think that we could get all the items there looking to address done in-house versus needing a, a full commission meeting for it. We thought if, if you had no objection, we continue to work through the process, and if they meet the requirements, we just approve it administratively. There's no objections. Anybody object? Okay. Save sounds, us a meeting. Okay. Sounds fine. Thank you. Um, a couple other items. Yes. Um, so next Monday we'll have the study meeting. We'll be talking about the Kmart site and then a a potential assisted living site near the northwest corner of 21 and Shaner. So I thought if we're going to have a study meeting, it might as well have a couple sites. And they're very interesting. I, I think it'll be some good discussion. Um, last month we had 13 sign applications in, De in December. Um, the annual report, which we usually give you in January, we'll give you in February this year since we don't have a meeting. Um, there was one other item um, effective tonight. The um, the board um, agreed as part of the budget process to increase the pay for all the commission members. Um, so uh, the regular the meeting fee will be $100. And chairman will get 125 And that's more for the Board of Appeals, too. I think it's long overdue. You know, it's a big commitment. You spend a lot of time preparing for the meetings, and we're appreciative of the efforts you all make. And I think that I thank the board members. They're the one who initiated this. So thank you. It's well, well, well worth the effort. Is there anything else, Scott, that's missing something? I can think of. Just something to clear with Mr. Wong. Mr. Dalla, go ahead. the study uh, meeting that we have in about Kmart site, mm -hmm. do we have a potential user for the site that we're discussing with, or are we coming up with some No, they're going to come in and give you some ideas of what they'd like to do with the site for some reuse of the building and maybe some of the site itself. Um, and M Mr. Snyder will be representing them, so he'll be there at the meeting. With the, with the owner of the Kmart site. And then um, for the other site, um, I don't know if the architect will be there, but the owner of the, of the per, potential developer of the assisted living has some plans he said he'd present. And he might give us some background material ahead of time. If he does, I'll email that to everybody. So it's meant to be informal, no formal presentation, you know, for, other than just sitting around the table. We'll do it downstairs, put the tables together so it's a little more conversational. They're just looking for some feedback is all they're looking for. No, there's no no decision making opportunity, so you can feel feel free to speak. You know your mind. Thank you. Okay, any business from the floor? I see nobody. So, <laughs> Mr. Dallow, motion to adjourn. Mr. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good night.